This is probably the most valuable tool you can put in your toolbox when you're trying to diagnose anything electrical. And I'm going to show you how to use this sucker. They're only about 15 bucks. Every toolbox should have one. This is going to be a multi-part series. By the end of this series, you'll be an expert on these little $15 cheapo multimeters. You're going to learn how to test your battery, load test your battery, test the charging system, test any component against the manual's specs, and we can test our stator. In episode one, I'm going to show you how to test the DC current coming out of your battery, your charging system. There's a lot of things you can do with DC volts on your multimeter. This is probably the most common one that you'll find off the shelf at any auto parts store, uh, Harbor Freight, any of those places. It looks really confusing, but I'll teach you how to use it. It's really easy. Or you have these little bit more fancy ones. This is just a purely automatic one, and I'll show you how to use that. I'll, lift, I'll put links down below so you can uh, purchase one of these off of Amazon. But of course they have fluke ones that are high dollar, really, really good stuff. But most guys are just going to have the $15 cheapo. This is all we really need to do what we're doing, diagnosing electrical issues on a 12 volt system on a motorcycle, ATV, scooter, jet ski, whatever you have that's 12 volts. I'm going to show you some simple ways to diagnose electrical stuff. When you get this sucker out of the box, most of the time you're going to have three ports just like that. And you'll have a, a black wire and a red wire. The black is always going to be ground or common. Plug that into the COM port. The red wire is just going to go into the VMA port, or, or they'll be right next to each other in short. And to be honest with you, there's a lot of stuff on here I've never even used. I'm going to show you the basic stuff that we use for diagnosing electrical stuff. I've been doing this for like 25 years, and you don't need to know how to use all this. Let me show you the automatic version. This is like the dummy proof one. You just plug in the com, plug in the input, and then a lot of times, you know, you'll have little caps on the top of here which look like that. And some of them cap off completely. Just make sure that you've got some exposed metal. So I'll start with the most basic one and then we'll kind of go back and forth. But this is really, really easy to use. Okay, so power it on. You'll see something that looks like that. If you look here, see how that says ACV? That means AC volts. And this one says DCV, that's DC volts. We're going to be learning the AC volts, the DC volts, and then there's this little upside down horseshoe, that's ohms. Now let me show you how to test a battery and a load test. This is like one of the most common things that go bad, is how do you test your battery? $15 part, it's really easy. So let's pop the seat on this sucker. I got to get to the battery. It's going to be different on every bike, of course. So let me open that sucker up. By the way, if you have one of these, you can also test your battery. This is a trickle charger port, but I'm not going to show it that way because I want to show what most people are going to see. So here's a battery, always going to look different on, on, on other bikes. We have these little alligator clips. These are nice for diagnosing issues. Not a must, it just makes it hands free. Okay, on the multimeter, we want to go to DC volts 20 or the lowest number. We need, you, want, you don't want to go any lower than 12 volts, but you want to be above 12 volts. So in this situation, it's 20. Okay, so I just have it chilling like that. I'm going to take this negative right here and touch it to the negative of the battery, which negative on a battery is either green or black on a 12 volt system. Okay, clip that on there. Now I'm going to clip this one. So just to recap, if you notice, the red is on the red of the battery, that's the positive, and the black is on the negative, which is either green or black. And keep in mind, I'm touching negative and positive. We're not going to zap ourselves or anything, you have to worry about that. But the battery shows that we're at 12.91 volts. You always want to have at least 12 and a half volts before you do any, diagnos any diagnostic. So just uh, on these automatic smart multimeters, which are kind of nice, a lot better than these as far as like uh, usability. So like for instance, I'm going to do the same exact thing that we just did. So we have 12.62. There's a discrepancy between the two gauges. These are cheap gauges, guys. This isn't like a 
we're just getting a general rule. But I just wanted to show you, like it automatically notices on these uh, smart uh, multimeters. You don't have to turn them or anything like that, but this is the most common. So we're gonna use that, but I just kinda wanted to give you a side-by-side -side comparison between the two. Since we're at 12.88 volts, when we turn the key on, it's gonna dip. I just turned the key on, headlights are on. Notice that it's dipping. It's gonna just keep going and going because the headlights are on. Some bikes, you know, the headlights don't turn on until you start it. In this scenario, it has DC headlights. So in order to do a battery load test, we need to be able to crank the engine over and not have it start. So one thing we can do is, a lot of bikes have a kickstand. If you put the kickstand down, it'll just crank and crank and it won't start. Another thing that we can do is pull the spark plug wire off the spark plug. I'm just gonna put the kickstand down on this bike because it'll crank over and not start. Uh, and then we can kind of load test the battery. So on your trickle charger, it'll say that green, the battery's fully charged and it's good. Don't let that fool you. You have to do this test. It's not going below nine volts. And if it does, the battery's gonna need to be replaced. I don't care if the battery's brand new. If you leave the key on overnight, and drain the battery all the way down, most likely the cell is gonna go bad. You wanna make sure you never let the battery go very low. One of the common things that I see when people make batteries go bad very quickly is the bike won't start. You're cranking, 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 crank, and then you just keep doing it till You obviously know it's not gonna start, so don't keep trying it, because you're gonna kill the cell on that battery. So remember that. Don't let it go below nine volts. It's not gonna do you any good. So once again, this is a load test. Not going below nine volts. All the cells in the battery are good. Even know if your trickle charger says it's good and it's green. All right, so that was the load test. Now we can move on to the charging system test. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the bike. And we're looking for, what we're doing right now is the charging system test. We wanna know if our charging system works. So if you, you're riding your bike and it, your battery goes low as you ride it. You know, you want to do this test. Remember, all I did was a negative on the negative side of the battery, positive on the positive side of the battery, and we set it to DC volts, very important, DC volts. So this is the test we're doing. We start, we want to make sure 100% we're at 12 and a half volts before we even turn the key on. But if you notice, the volts are going up, and we're at an idle. The bike's only idling. We want this to be between 12.5 and 13 volts or more, 13.5 is fine. Actually, you, in short, it can't go above 15 volts. So, as you can see, it's charging just fine at an idle. Next, we wanna rev up the engine. Oh, I just killed, killed it. Uh, pushed the kill switch on accident. I'm gonna rev it up, and it's gonna go to 3,000 RPM, and I'm just gonna hold it there. If you don't know what 3,000 RPM is, it sounds about like this. I'm just gonna keep it there. If you notice, the volts going up to 14.6. The most important thing is that the volts are going up and it's not going above 15 volts. It can never go above 15 volts. If it goes above 15 volts, you have a bad rectifier regulator. If the volts aren't climbing, it could be a bad stator or a bad rectifier regulator, but most likely it's gonna be a bad stator. But this is how you test the charging system on a, any system, any 12-volt system. 